So this is a video uh, about how to install post processing into Unity. Now, if you're creating a scene using Unity HDRP, which is a high definition render pipeline, or URP, which is a universal render pipeline, post processing is available straight away in those. It comes added into the uh, actual scene. Uh, if you're using the standard 3D pipeline, the, the old standard 3D scene, uh, you have to actually add it manually. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. So if we go to Window, Package Manager. Okay, I'm just gonna wait for this to update. Now you don't need to be logged in to do this. Um, just the built-in section, and I'm looking for post-processing. Okay, so, or maybe it's the, oh, Unity Registry rather. Um, so I'm looking for post-processing and there it is. Okay, so the latest version at this moment in time is 3.2.2, which came out in April 14th, 2022. So we're just gonna click install to install that. Okay, it should install pretty quickly. So it installs all sorts of scripts uh, that are gonna be able to apply um, effects at, in post processing. So once once your scene is actually rendered, they render over the top of it. Hence why it's called post processing. Uh, so I'll show you these in action. Now you won't see anything change in your assets window, but if you click in the packages, you'll now see that you've got post processing. Okay, you don't actually need to go into the packages folder, so we can stay in the assets. So um, we've got ourselves a main camera. So the first thing that we need to do is to give ourselves a post-processing layer. So I'm gonna click add, com add component, just type post, and we're gonna go post-process layer. Okay, this is the first step. Now it needs a layer to be set up to actually detect the post-processing. So uh, at the top where we have layer, I'm gonna click add layer. I'm just gonna type in the first available layer that you have, uh, post with a capital P, processing with a capital P, no spacing. Okay, now go back to main camera. Once again, just choose that post processing. You only need to do that on, on the camera that's actually rendering the post processing. You don't need to do it on other objects. So now in our post processing layer, we can simply choose that post processing layer and it's now all set up to go. Now we need to add a volume. Okay, so at the bottom, we're going to click Add Component, a Post Process Volume. This time we're going to make it global, so it affects the entire world. And you can control the weight of the effect. So at the moment it's on full, it's on one. And we'll take a look at this in a second, what happens when you reduce that. Now you do need a profile in order, in order to store all of the detail, all of the data. So if you click New, it will then create one uh, in the folder. So it just kind of looks like this. This is the icon for it. Uh, and you can click on there at any point and add any kind of overrides. So every time you add some kind of an effect, it's called an override. So um, we can do it through the main camera because that's where it's sitting at the moment. So if we click add effect, um, go to unity, let's try and add sort of um, maybe some color grading. Okay, uh, now I do need to make sure that my post processing is switched on in my scene view. So that's this little button here. So if I click this, using my checkbox, uh, my little arrow, make sure post-processing is checked on. That way we can preview it in the scene view. Um, so I've added color grading. Okay, so you can easily just open that up. But at the moment, everything is unchecked, which means nothing is being applied. So in order to apply things, you need to check them on. So let's say I change my mode to something like Aces. Instantly, you can see a change in the scene. Let's say, for example, I want to put temperature and I wanted to warm this up, move this up and suddenly it gets extremely warm, or you can bring it down and it can get extremely cold. You can even apply some kind of a tint over the entire scene to sort of change the color of it. So remember, whenever you want to apply one of these, you need to switch it on or you can switch it off. Your post exposure or exposure values, um, you can increase those to make a scene really light, decrease to make them extremely dark, okay? And the same thing should be applied in your game view as well, okay?
okay so it's happening in real time um, so that's just one of the overrides we can also click add effect unity any of these so you can choose any let's say for example we wanted a bit of ambient occlusion once again we need to check on the items we want so if it's mode intensity and thickness multiplier my intensity i can drag this up and check out what's happening that is weird thickness modifier you can choose how thick those darker areas are and i can then refine those until i get exactly what i'm looking for okay you can even choose the change the color of the uh, actual ambient occlusion etc um, which is pretty easy to do and let's say for example um, that we wanted something like a vignette so mode classic color center and intensity so if i increase the intensity you see what i get and obviously i can just add that so it kind of darkens out the edges a little bit that's what a vignette does so um, as part of our weight, we can actually reduce this amount. As we drag this down, zero is no pulse processing at all. And we can actually increase the intensity of the pulse processing. Okay, so that's what that does. Now you can have as many profiles as you like. So at the moment I've, I've got a profile here, it's stored. If I were to click, let's say the profile and choose new, it will create an entirely new one with no effects okay so now i can once again go through it again let's say i add a bloom this time and i go intensity threshold and i make my intensity pretty bright and my threshold bring this down so notice how it now starts to kind of glow yep so i'm now using that profile at any point I can actually change my profiles back over. So this was the first profile that I had. So now I can drag that into that slot. And, oh, is that the wrong one? Uh, this one then, into that slot. And it takes me back to the one that I started with. So you don't actually lose your data stored in here. Okay, whatever changes you make to this are gonna uh, be seen in your scene view. And you can make as many of these profiles as you like. And that will obviously affect the main camera. Obviously when the main camera is not rendering, um, let's say we create a new camera and we switch off the main camera, notice that the post-processing goes away. That's because the post-processing is entirely dependent on the post-process layer and some kind of a volume. All right, so if you do want multiple cameras, just set them up in that way and ensure that all of the cameras are using the post-processing layer. If I were to change this layer to something like default, switch off, I'll get rid of this camera, switch this camera back on, notice it has no effect whatsoever on the scene. And that is because um, the layer is not set on the correct layer. As soon as I put post-processing, it comes back on again. Okay, so that hopefully that gets you up and running with post-processing in the standard 3D render pipeline for Unity.